Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the of Scott Selections here for Saturday, October 8th. For again, today's play of the day, quick recap of what happened yesterday. We had a loss in hockey with Roman Yossi over half an assist at plus 110 on DraftKings. I said in the video that I'd be shocked if Nashville scored three or four goals and Yossi wasn't a part of any of them. And that's exactly what happened. Nashville scored four goals. Yossi had no points. And on top of that, the Predators also had four power play chances. Didn't score in any of them. Had a lot of really good setup chances for Yossi on the power play. None of them worked out. But at the end of the day, Yossi was on the ice for 24 plus minutes and he had no points. So I still like the value associated with it. Just didn't work out. Look for a bounce back winner here on Saturday. And for today's play, they're going to pivot and talk about some NFL action on Sunday. Look at a matchup between the Cowboys and the Rams taking place on Sunday at around 425 p.m. Eastern time. And for this matchup, since the Rams are involved, I'm sure you know where we're going with this one. We're going back to all reliable, the cash cow itself, Matt Stafford interception at minus 135 on DraftKings. Time recording of 1 a.m. on Saturday, Eastern time. Cumberland's why I like Stafford to throw a pick again in this matchup. A lot of these stats are going to sound pretty similar because it's the same stats. We just keep updating them as the games go by, but they're still pretty alarming. And going through the numbers themselves, Stafford has thrown at least one interception in three of the first four games this season. And that's nothing new because dating back to last year and the Super Bowl run, he's thrown at least one interception in nine of the last 12 games. And to go through those same 12 games, he's also thrown a bunch of interceptions, not just one per game in those nine. He's thrown 17 interceptions in those last 12 games. We know Stafford's a gunslinger. We know either he had an elbow issue during the offseason and maybe he hasn't fully recovered, or he just doesn't exactly have the greatest weapons and offensive line around him. So either way, Stafford's looked pretty underwhelming this season, and you have seen a lot of questionable throws. To go through the defensive numbers, though, for Dallas, Dallas has been pretty opportunistic, especially with the pass defense, as the Cowboys are averaging one interception per game, which ranks tied for ninth in the league. We know Diggs is not afraid to jump routes, try to make big plays, and I do think that Diggs could potentially catch Stafford with his hand in the cookie jar at some point during this matchup. But the main issue, besides the lack of a number two receiver, which we'll talk about in a second, and Stafford's potential elbow concerns, it's really the offensive line for the Rams. And against elite pass rushes, the Rams' offensive line has been useless so far this season. We saw week one, Buffalo absolutely just tortured Stafford and hit him a bunch. And we saw it again last week as the Rams allowed seven sacks against the Niners on Monday Night Football. It could have been a lot more. Uh, I think the Niners had a shot or two there, maybe nine or ten sacks. But either way, the point is Stafford was constantly pressured, and he had to get rid of the ball pretty quickly. I don't think that's a good recipe for him to keep good control of the football. And I think eventually he'll end up having to force one out quickly, maybe before his receiver comes out of a break. And I do think as a result, you'll end up seeing some type of miscommunication that could lead to a pick. But you look at the Cowboys' defense, it's been very good. And with Lawrence, who's having a solid year, with Parsons, who he knows is an absolute savage on the defensive line, at the end of the day, I do think the Cowboys should generate constant pressure, and I think Stafford will be running for his life a decent amount, which should result in a couple of pressure throws that might be a little bit off target, not to mention Stafford thinking he can make every possible throw. But you're going through the, the actual weapons that the Rams have. We know Cup's incredible. We know the numbers. He's, he's amazing. But the problem is... They lost Odell, who's still a free agent. Robert Woods went to Tennessee. They picked up Allen Robinson, who was supposed to be their number two complimentary option to Cup. The problem is he's completely washed, and if you watch him play, you know he's washed because he's been a non-factor in basically every game so far this season. You have Skoranek, a little bit of Higby, but you really don't have many weapons. And if the Cowboys end up shadowing Cup or double-teaming outright, I do think Stafford's going to have some problems because his second and third reads are not exactly good options in this offense. But 135 might sound juicy. I know it was 125 earlier in the week. It has moved. I think it should be higher. Stafford, as I said before, he's thrown a, at least one pick in 75% of the last 12 games, which is just crazy to me. 135 against the good Cowboys defense seems a little cheap to me. I'm going to take it. Split it once again here for Saturday, October 8th is going to be on Matt Stafford interception at minus 135 on DraftKings. Bye, everyone.